Hey, Andresa, you're going to be the star performer. So I hope you, uh, you know, uh, you know, it's, uh, be preparing well for this uh, stage performance. So I've started recording. So anything you say will be held in evidence against you. And you know, if you get prosecuted too, then don't come uh, blaming me, okay? Because just whatever happens on this stage will go live to the world. So just be aware okay, of good. I'll, I'll be right back. I'm going to go get my lawyer, and he'll sit in here. Excellent. With you. Perfect. So right. Andrew is the star performer. So like I said to you, he's a representative of Sapping a Consultant. Uh, so they're a, a business to business uh, marketing uh, company, uh, highly rated. So they keep telling me. So you, but you know how, how gullible I am or not. But, uh, you know, but on a serious note, uh, we are obviously, our, when I say we, our collective, our global organization, are uh, doing various global campaigns and we do want to basically target specific uh, audience uh, target platform so we want to listen to what you have to say and whether your platform and your tool are ideal fit for you know uh, what our organization and our partners and our members are, are doing uh, so before I turn it over to you, I just want to quickly introduce those others that are on this forum right now. So Barnaby is a uh, UK. Uh, he's one of our business entities, which uh, uh, we are doing some business uh, enterprise. In fact, actually, he's the one that initiated this. So he asked me a question, actually, uh, uh, a couple of months ago about uh, getting out a message to masses, blah, blah, blah. And that actually was actually triggered. Uh, so when Andrew contacted me, actually the first thing that clicked in my head was, well, this is what Barnaby asked for. So, so you can blame him for starting this uh, ball rolling, actually. So he's from the UK. Uh, Richard Yen is my very old Chinese partner. He's over 50 now, so he's a very old man. So you may have to speak loudly, so his hearing may be going. You know? So you can see he's wearing glasses already. That's what happens when you turn into an old man, I'm afraid, you know. So, <laughs> yeah, so, uh, so I got to have a business partner to insult, you know, otherwise life gets boring. So, he's, so that's, why, that's why he's my business partner, so I can insult him. Uh, I cannot insult Andrea because she's so young and beautiful. There's nothing that I can insult her on. I'm trying my best. I I'm think I'm I'm I can come up with something eventually. But Andrea is... Uh, Actually, Andrea is the creator of our One Humanity, One World Global Social Movement. So that's one of the target uh, entities that we are looking to use this platform that hopefully Andrew can uh, enlighten us on. Uh, Seafood Douglas Lee is a, a world famous renowned Wing Chun master. He's developed his own uh, Sam Fat philosophy based on his teaching. Uh, he's one of the original youngest uh, Sifu uh, in New York, uh, dating back in the, in the 70s. So he had followers all around the world, literally thousands and thousands of followers all around the world. So he doesn't need email blasts. He's already super famous and whatever, uh, etc. cetera. But uh, he is very important because he's part of our educational platform that we're planning on putting together, which was part of this One Humanity, One World, uh, which we are uh, wanting to... Uh, develop a humanity for peace educational curriculum, which we plan to uh, put, uh, present to the Afghan government. I go to the embassy uh, soon. This idea actually brainchild come from Dr. Nadi. He was a presidential candidate in uh, Afghanistan in 2014. So it's actually his brainchild. Uh, so our goal is to put uh, an educational platform so that every children in the world is taught the basic of mathematics, language and humanity for peace. So every citizen, every children will learn the basic of how to read, write, count, and love humanity. So, so that is, the, so that is our, our, the people on board. So there may be other people joining, etc. So I ask those that are not speaking to mute themselves until they have a question. So we'll let Andrew uh, finish his presentation. Andrew, I've, I've uh, share the screen. So if you want to share your presentation, whatever the PowerPoint, whatever, uh, you go ahead and I'll leave the platform to you. So everyone, if you have question, wait till Andrew has finished with his presentation and then we can throw whatever we want at him to answer. So I'll let you, Andrew, take center stage. So thank you very much. I'm going to mute myself now. Thank you.
Okay, thank you, Leong. I appreciate it. And uh, thank you to, to everyone on the call for uh, for carving out the time for me here. Um, don't really have a presentation to walk through visually. So for now, uh, it'll just be me you're stuck with looking at on the screen. Um, I do have some uh, something I can share, you know, later in, in the call. Um, but I can also it's, it's just a simple thing I can send to everyone uh, for you all to keep and review. That's just an overview of our process. So um, Sapper Consulting has been around now for about seven years. Uh, we're located in St. Louis, Missouri, uh, right in the middle of the US. Um, we were started by Jeff Winters. He is our current CEO. And before starting Sapper Consulting, Jeff was in charge of sales and marketing for a um, small software company here in St. Louis. And it was his job in that role to get uh, sales meetings with chief human resource officers at Fortune 1000 companies. And the software he had to sell was still in beta and no one had actually bought it yet. So he had a very big challenge in front of him to try to get in the door with these high level decision makers at enterprise uh, companies. And he tried everything and for a long time struggled um, to get any meetings. He was doing cold calling, um, you know, social media networking, Facebook, LinkedIn. He was even sending like handwritten notes and just doing, trying anything to stand out, right? To get a warm response and to get a meeting. Well, none of it was working for him. So eventually through a period of trial and error, he came up with a systematic process of emailing these decision makers directly and sending different uh, messages, meaning different tones in the language at different times uh, and also different sequences of messages and then very closely tracking all of these to see what would get him in the door for these sales meetings. Um, and about a year into using the process, he had successfully met with around 150 of these decision makers. And he finally realized that the meetings would always begin the same way. They would essentially say, hey, Jeff, thanks for making the trip. Excited to hear what you have to say. But first, can you tell us how you got this meeting? Because we don't know you, um, we don't know your company and the software that you're selling doesn't really appear to be in use yet by anyone. So like, how did we get here? And he would, you know, explain his story and oftentimes sell some software, but then he quit because he figured if I can get in the door at places like Netflix, Google, JP Morgan Chase, to name a few big ones, uh, on behalf of this really a no name software company out of St. Louis, Missouri, I think I can provide this service for about anyone. So with that, uh, the idea for Sapper Consulting was born. You fast forward to today, so seven years later, uh, we've been featured in Entrepreneur and Forbes and Harvard Business Review. We've been on the Inc. 500 fastest growing list for three consecutive years. And we work with companies of all sizes. Um, we have individual consultants who use our service. We work with very large enterprise companies like Adobe and Microsoft, but for all of them, we provide the same service and it's very simple. We're just securing qualified sales meetings that result in closed deals for them at the end of the day. So that's kind of the, the story behind who we are, if, if you will. Any, any questions at this point? If I can uh, ask a question, um, forgive me for jumping in um, ahead of everyone. Um, obviously this is a service that provides, as you said, qualified sales meetings or meetings where there's at least a prospect of a chance to, to make a sale, which is great. Do you focus or do you have anything that works on a more of a mass marketing scale or, you know, um, whether it's with AI to do with the messaging or the, some sort of reporting software that can track or trace messages that are sent and, you know, take up of um, the product or user sort of um, viewing of the products? Is that something you do? Um, I don't think so. And, and I, um, I'm also, I'm careful around AI, uh, to not confuse it with like, we rely heavily on big data, of course, um, realizing that that is completely separate from AI. We use, um, information like intent data and mm -hmm. we build a buyer or, or rather we match each prospect that we are seeking on behalf of our clients to a buyer persona based on, right. you know, using intent data and that sort of thing. Right. In order to so so you have a massive data initially, exactly. like a massive data pool, and mm -hmm. then depending on the product, you can let's say profile the client or profile the prospective client, and then let's say you have a million client records, you may have you know a hundred thousand that are specific to a certain niche or sector, and then you would then target those hundred thousand, for instance, to to set up the meeting. 
Correct. Is that right? Correct. Brilliant. And, and our okay. data, um, so our vendor relationships are where, that's where we get our data. Uh, we work with Zoom Info, um, Discover Info, uh, Brad and Dunn Street, um, or excuse me, Dunn and Brad Street. So some of the biggest data providers in the world, um, we just you know work closely with to leverage the contacts that they have access to. And with the respects to the records, are you in the millions of records? Yes, th uh, 300 million and, records. And it's obviously with that, it's global. It's not just US based. Uh, that is a global figure when I say 300 million, although currently we're only providing our service in the United States. Um, and that's for a number of reasons, but primarily um, legal reasons, uh, because you know the, the email outreach that we do here in the US um, you can, just can't do it in, in Canada, for example. Um, yeah, and I think- It's a compliance the, issue, I guess. A compliance, exactly. Thank you. That's yeah. What yeah. I was looking for. yeah. Uh, okay. And I think the UK has rather strict- um, you know, Yeah, yeah, strict fine. That would prevent us from yeah. operating there as we do here in the US currently. So that's why our focus is 100% here now. Thank you. That was everything from me for now. Sorry. Just curiosity, okay. I mean, Obviously, when you mean meeting, I mean, a meeting can be, you know, uh, a physical meeting or just a meeting of ideas. Because like I said to you, uh, for our concept, for example, we may just want to deliver our manifesto, like Andrew's written there, the manifesto for our one humanity, one world. So we don't need someone to meet, in, especially like, like Barnaby said, we want to get this to 7 billion people in the world. Of course, like I said, limited. So in the US, there's, you know, 380 million, half of them are adults. So our goal in the US is to target 150 million adults to get our God message. And I, I make absolutely no bone about it. You know, we are there to sell uh, our, our God, etc. Uh, so we don't need to meet 150 million. I mean, they all want to meet, whatever, that's fine. But it'd be tough to, to do that meeting. But as long as we get our manifesto out there, now, our manifesto includes, like I said, our manifesto. For example, we have put in this educational platform. Uh, so for the educational platform, which will include uh, uh, Sifu's lead, for example, Sam Fat Philosophy and other educational platform, that our goal is to do it both ways. Our goal is to mass blast it to all the parents in the world to say, hey, wait a minute, I want my children to learn language, mathematics, and humanity for peace. That's a that's a freaking great idea. I should push my senator, and my congressman on that issue. But also what we will do is we can also target specific targets, like example, you know, educational principles of every single university, principle of every single high school, principle of every sec secondary school. You know, so so that is where we could target both. We can do what Bonnie said, you know, blast it out. You know, I want you to get every single email of every single American uh, in it and just blast our manifesto on our educational platform to all 150 million adults. And let's add the children in. So let's make it 380 million Americans. We want you to blast it out there. But then we want you to tailor maybe to the, the 10,000 of, uh, of principles, of, of governors, of things that we do actually yeah. want to meet, you know, uh, that we want to set up meeting with these high level I uh, think uh, Dr. Nady, who is actually his brainchild of this educational platform, for example, he's setting up uh, the meeting for us uh, with uh, uh, as, as Afghanistan for me. And, you know, so I think he just dropped out. Uh, oh, no, he's there with us. So, so he's specifically targeting, uh, I said, to, for us to implement his educational uh, brainchild, which we are developing the very curriculum for government, for example, he's been talking recently with his education minister. Uh, therefore, for that, at least for the US market, we will have specific uh, targeted uh, market. So for the, the One Humanity, One World, our education platform, we have both the mass media where we want to email literally every American uh, there is, and then we have specific where we want to maybe target the 10,000 of decision makers, high ranking, you know, principals, educational board, parents association, uh, president, et cetera, those that we want to sit down and say, okay, well, this is our curriculum that we want to put in. You know, we want every child on this planet in America uh, to learn 
languages, mathematics, well, in this case, languages, mathematics, and so just uh, think, and humanity for peace. So, so that is uh, how it, so it sounds like we have 300 million uh, database. Uh, out of that 300 million, how many of those are American? Um, I'm not sure I have a uh, specific answer to that okay. question, although I, the majority certainly. Yeah, now, uh, do, you have a, do you have a list of who those target is? I guess, like I mentioned, you know, we decide we want to uh, approach, uh, you know, government officials, or we want to approach mm -hmm. educational boards, or we want to approach, you know, or Americans. So we give you a list of this is who we want to target. Uh, like the you, profile, people yeah. say, yeah, we, we can do this, tick, tick, tick. And then I assume you will then, we will give you the material, what we're trying to pitch it, and you will help us market it in the way that will generate these, quote, meetings. So the meeting for the masses means pretty much they'll just hopefully read our manifesto and our document and say, yeah, we loved it. We're going to speak up to our governor. We want our children to learn this. And obviously for the decision makers say, yeah, loved it. I want to meet Andrea. I want to meet Dr. Ying. I want to meet Dr. Nader uh, to sit down and say, how can we add this curriculum to our thing? So that, I think that's how it would work, correct? Correct. And um, kind of back to your original point about the meeting in person versus a, a telephone call or a Zoom conference. Yeah. Um, most of what we we're setting up for our existing clients, even pre-COVID, were telephone or video conference meetings, um, just for kind of an efficiency standpoint. Of course, we have clients who like to meet in person when they can, um, but most of our clients are selling nationally. So, um, you know, a, a meeting very well could mean, a, you know, a telephone call or, or a Zoom video conference. Um, yeah. And we would not be the right partner for you in terms of um, kind of a mass communication um, play. You know what I'm saying? I mean, if you want to reach 300 million people here in the United States, you certainly don't need our help in doing that. I would recommend you would go to directly to the data providers who, who yeah. are our partners, yeah. like a Zoom Info, for example, yeah. um, and you can much more affordably get access to yeah. long lists of people um, what, what we really specialize in is to combine um, creativity, and I can get into that a little bit with how we write our emails, uh, with technology, a proprietary software we have that's a recommendation engine um, that guides us in how best to communicate with different types of people, kind of back to the idea of bias. <laughs> so just to be really clear, like for most of our clients, they are enlisting our help to communicate with buyers of some sort who, you know, at a high level of a company, usually, you know, C-suite executive level, um, who are probably getting all types of solicit solicitations and not, and they're accepting very few. That's where we come in to actually get them to engage with us via email, warm up and say, okay, yeah, uh, you know what, Leon, let's put this on the calendar. This sounds interesting. Let's talk. Um, now, <clears throat> In some of the people, uh, the kind of high influence individuals who you mentioned, like a senator or a principal, um, people in leadership roles, we certainly could help with that um, in identifying those people and then running all the communication with them. Um, but th I hope, hopefully, that example kind of paints the picture of what it is that we do. Yeah. Now, when you send out this, do you when you send out this email, do you CC us? Or do you not, obviously, do you do it with what, do you provide us the list? Do you CC us? Do you track, you know, uh, the 10,000 you send, how many you get or don't get? Uh, and then do you, when, when they the respond to email, do the email go to you first and then you forward to us? Or does it come to us? How does the process uh, develop, generally speaking? Sure. I will, um, actually, I'll just run through our process real quick. Um, that I think will kind of help to shed some light on that. So um, first of all, we do not provide our entire list of contacts, um, the, the entire list of people who we are prospecting on behalf of our clients. Um, that is something that you could get directly, again, from a data provider like a Zoom Info, for example. But because of our partnership with them, um, we don't just, we're not like the middleman getting a list from Zoom and then handing it over to a customer 
they want you to go directly to them for that. And it makes sense, right? They're, they're the true owner, owners of that data. Um, what we do provide you with is um, any contact information that has engaged with us in any way. So if we've gotten a response from someone, you have access to that information through us. Maybe they said, no thanks, not interested, or yes, would love to chat, or check back in three months. All of those uh, conversational interactions we can provide to you. And so then if it's, um, you know, it's not an immediate turnaround, like not a, hey, let's talk tomorrow or next week, but maybe let's say six months, for example, you would have that information at your disposal to use, you know, when the time is right down, down the road. But as far as our process goes, it's a four-step process that begins with onboarding. Um, so we introduce each new client to a service team. It's four individuals at Sapper. And uh, they're going to learn everything that they can uh, about the business, or in this case, about um, really your mission, right, and the manifesto and, and what you were trying to accomplish here and um, how you were positioning that. Um, so just a systematic exchange of information. And so that's step one, onboarding. Step two is targeting, and that's where we get into the 300 million records, right, across the globe. The vast majority of those are in the U.S. Um, and we are identifying typically, you know, an ideal customer profile uh, or whatever you want to call it, you know, your ideal prospect, who, do, who is that person? What does that look like? Um, you know, what size of organization are they with in terms of revenue or number of employees? What job title do they have or do they not have? Um, so just narrowing it down on, on who you want to target and building a detailed list of prospects that will then pursue on your behalf. That's step two. Step three is writing the content. That's pretty self-explanatory. That's just the writing in the emails, but um, it's also where we differentiate ourselves a lot in our space because we hire entertainment writers. Um, they come from very interesting backgrounds at places like Netflix or Pixar. Many have written for like stand-up comics. Um, so interesting kind of creative uh, professional backgrounds and they put a creative twist on the writing. Um, of course, using what they know about uh, your mission and also what we know about those who we're talking to, uh, who we're, we're reaching out to, um, they just kind of add some creativity to it in order to send out a message that our data tells us will get a warm response. You know, we'll get the response of yes, let's talk. So that's step three, right in the content. And then step four is optimization. Um, and this is really essentially the, the value um, that we are, are able to provide. This is how we, we operate. So we leverage big data, as you know, um, and we have a proprietary recommendation engine that tells us exactly what time to send exactly what message to which type of person who we're reaching out to. Um, so it's using predictive analytics to position us to have the, the best, most sensible um, initial interaction with these individuals. Um, and you know, it's optimizing throughout the campaign. And then when we do hit the right person at the right time with the right message, they say, yes, let's put a time on the calendar. We go ahead and we put that directly on your calendar. We put that on your prospects calendar, and then we hand the ball off to you and we're, we're on to the next one. Our job with that one is finished because the meeting is, is set. So again, and, and I think that kind of provides a little bit of, um, hopefully makes sense in terms of most of the people who we are pursuing on behalf of our clients are not easy to get a meeting with typically. That's why they've hired us, right? Um, it's not as easy as picking up the phone and making a phone call and getting a meeting. If it were, then it, they shouldn't be paying us to do it our way, you know? Um, so that is the process. It's onboarding, targeting, writing, and optimization. Okay, thank you. Uh, now, when you send out that email, is that email uh, from Sapping Consultant or would that email appear from, you know, Clystar, Clytech, uh, Will it mention, you know, Dr. Ying is uh, launching this global blah, blah, blah. So, so how would uh, the email, how would the, the targeted uh, people will actually see the email coming from? Yeah, great question. So it would come from um, Clytech or, you know, any of whichever company you would want to have on it. It okay. would come from uh, Dr. Ling or whatever name you want to have on it. And we would set up a separate domain um, so a brand new domain that doesn't currently exist that would like very closely mirror um, any existing domain that you want to have, you know, have it be associated with. So for example, if I have a website that's just my name, let's say it's andrewdavis.com, 
and I'm hiring Sapper Consulting to do an email campaign for me, then that new domain could look something like andrewdavis.co or andrewdavisusa.com or, you know, it's just some slight variance in a brand new domain. Um, and we do that for a number of reasons, but really the most important is so that we can build up the health um, and control the health of the domain. Um, it's imperative to have, you know, a, a high score or ranking, if you will, with Microsoft and Google, because I think 80% of the email inboxes out there go through those two. Um, so when we open up a new domain on your behalf, in those initial days after we do that, we are building up the health of that domain, basically sending out hundreds or thousands of emails um, from it and also replying to it to say, so that Google and Microsoft look at that and say, this is legitimate. This is not someone blasting out, you know, spam emails. Um, oh, so let me clarify. So for example, I have Clystar, which in my scientific god so it's to unify religion and science so i have mm -hmm. both clystar.com and clystar.org i have both those domains therefore mm -hmm. if you would take on uh our religious aspect and get it up to a pope to well <coughs> you know, but all the all the bishops in the u.s etc or the cardinals or the religious uh, uh whatever entity you would then want to create a Clystar.us, for example, instead. Now, would Correct. you replicate up my existing Clystar website, or would you totally design it based on how you want to get what you perceive as the correct, optimized way of getting the message out? Yeah, I, I don't think we, we would copy the website. Um, and in fact, we could link the, we would link the website, you know, the existing website. Um, so the well, domain you're is- gonna, You're gonna design the website and you're gonna host the website. You're gonna do all that. The yeah, but the, we, US. we will, we will um, build it, but yeah. it's really, it's only intended purpose is to send these emails. So if people visit your website, I don't want them going to clystar.co. I want them going to clystar.com, right? I want them going to yeah. your website that is developed yeah. and you know prepared for um, for that user experience. Okay, so, so the email that you're going to get back, you're going to use the the you know you're going to use the, the either the Dr. Leong Ying at clystar.us that you set up or the Andrew uh, your name uh, at clystar. So it's basically for you to manage the the email that you will send, but it's a pseudo client stuff. So you're not using my direct email as such, but you're using exactly. an email of a, 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 like a, a mirrored uh, domain so that you can manage the, the, the email separately uh, for us, correct? Exactly. If, yes, if we were to use one of your existing domains, we would have to do you know, all types of integrations and um, you know, all of a sudden there would be a lot of traffic and a lot more activity probably around those domains that are currently existing that could yeah. potentially have some, um, some Thank consequences of some yeah. sort, you know yeah. what I'm saying? Yeah. Um, so yeah, th that's why we do the, the separate domain. Okay. And it, it's kind of funny at the end of the, of the relationship, you know, whenever, yeah. hopefully that would be years down the road, but whenever we part ways, um, we sell the domain to you for $1 if you'd like it, because legally there has to be a, a, a transaction of money in order to, for a domain to switch hands. Okay. So all right. uh, you get that new domain for a dollar. It's a, it's a great deal. Okay. So, all right. So, all right. So, so that's good. So if our relationship terminates in that domain, you will sell it to $1 if we wanted it, of course, you know, uh, right. et cetera. Uh, so, okay, all right. Uh, but uh, like I said, the design of that domain is part of the package that you offer and your team will design it based on the message that we want you to get out there for us. So that's totally up to you to optimize it the way you feel that that's gonna, how you're gonna target the audience that we ask you to target for us. And your design team will come up, well, this is the best way of designing it. Just shut up, let us do the work. We know what we're doing, blah, blah, blah. All we do is get the, the email out there and to basically maximize the number of quote meetings uh, for you. Okay. Correct. Now, and also, now you on your presentation, you said you guarantee the service. So what is the guarantee that 
you're guaranteeing that you get a certain percentage of the, the meetings. What is the, the word guarantee mean? Yeah, so I use that very carefully because um, there's really no guarantee in marketing or advertising, right, at, at the end of the day. Um, so our objective is to secure uh, 30 qualified meetings over the course of a six-month pilot period. So, um, you know, that provides also a little insight on how, you know, what, what kind of um, sales initiatives or what kind of companies we're really the best fit for. What kind of company is selling a product or service? where they're thinking, okay, 30 qualified meetings, um, you know, that we help to qualify as the client, uh, you know, what is that going to look like to me from um, an opportunity standpoint, a closing ratio, uh, a potential revenue standpoint, that is, that's how we start each client off. Uh, six months, um, we charge $3,000 per month. It's just a flat fee for that service. And again, the objective is to secure a minimum of 30 meetings at the end of the, the six month pilot program. So on average five per month. Yeah. Could I interject? So, so I understand obviously you, your current model. I, I, I get it. I understand what you're trying to do with the emails and the, the kind of marketing and maybe the algorithms that reply to the emails or the bots or even, you know, the systems that you use, that's fine. Um, obviously from, from my standpoint and, and um, Dr. Leong's standpoint, um, we are, let's say, targeting masses as opposed to targeting niches, but we're doing both as well. So right. obviously what you, you gather is that there are, um, let's say, people of influence who we would like to contact, that we'd like to have the meetings with, if possible. Those contacts would be from quite large pools or large numbers. So although, for example, you may have a target of, say, 30 um, potential client meetings and we work back the CPA, let's say, based on those client meetings and what we could generate. It's not necessarily about us generating money or right. finances, but influence and change. Right. So it's the same for my project. It's the same for, for Leon's project. So I, I think from, from my standpoint, I would look to be doing a blend of the two where we have a consistent message. We have a constant message. We have an ethical message that is profiled to, let's say, individuals over the age of 18, but let's say uh, max age, say 60, um, people who are you know, familiar with using internet, web-based programs that are interested in new technology, that are interested in new ideologies, things like this, where they are susceptible or open to a new message or a new brand or a new product that doesn't exist because that's effectively what this is right okay. so we have one campaign that does that which is you know done with your perfectly crafted emails and how that has to appear whether the person's in africa or asia or you know uh, america obviously there's a difference on the message the the, the the text for example the introduction um the times those messages are sent out so on and so forth so you do basically automate or control that which is great and then we then say, okay, well, based on your 300 million records, there's a tiny, tiny fraction, probably 0 0.015, maybe less than, you know, certainly less than 1%, mm -hmm. that we need to speak to those sort of key influencers, those key decision makers, and they get a slightly different message or something that's more bespoke. And if we do get those meetings, fantastic. But at the very least, they've at least had an opportunity to view um, the information that we are showcasing, the information that we are providing. Because effectively, this is a user acquisition type mission. It's not a, I have a product to sell, here's the fee, we want you to use it. The products, certainly from my side, are free. I'm looking for users. Um, it's very, very similar, I, I believe personally, to, to what Leon's trying to do, which is a, a mindset change or a call to action, which is probably something that you better understand. Mm -hmm. um, is to say, look, here's the information, here's what we're presenting. So my question is, number one, is that doable? I think the answer is yes, based mm -hmm. on what you've said. I think it's going to come down to cost mm -hmm. and profiling, and the better we profile the data that you have um, based on the sectors and the, the parameters that you use, we will be able to give you the perfect candidate, if there is one. Mm -hmm. We'll be able to, 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 to do that and say, well, from your 300 million records, these are the records that we will target um, and there's obviously a cost in that which of course I'm sure you'll elaborate on um, and then moving forwards um, my next question was going to be let's say that 
you have had successful um, marketing or successful user acquisition or so on and so forth. Is there anything ever done on a sort of visual basis? So something like a, a video or a link or something where you see the email, they're quite interested, but now I get to showcase, you know, maybe it's a presentation with Leon, maybe it's, uh, for me, it's a banking platform. So it would be, you know, the benefits of the platform, how the idea was originated, so on and so forth. Mm. Um, you know, so that someone can go, wow, I like this video. It's 30 seconds. It's a minute and a half. I've watched it. Where do I sign? Where do I sign in? Or where do I um, register my interest? Whether it's for me or Leong, it's personally, I see it as very similar, to be mm -hmm. honest with you. Is that something you've ever done? Um, so I'll have to check on that um, because what we typically do um, is intentionally, we do not include video or HTML um, just because that, you know, in our experience, that can be cause an email uh, to get flagged for some reason as just more of like an attempt to engage someone without a back and forth conversation. So Does it also add to the cost based on the, the file size for the email that would go out? Um, another good question that I, I wish I had a better answer to, but I'll check on that. Oh. I think, we, you know, well, we could, Barnaby, one thing we could do, like obviously on the website that the donor like them, the Clystar.us, we could ask you to put in that video link. So, like, example, you you know, my religious preaching or Barnaby banking, uh, you know, the greatest Bitcoin, whatever in this world. We could insist that you put that video link into the the, the web domain. Is that correct? I think it is, but I need I do need to check though. Yeah. I, I think it's more a case of as well, you know, then I suppose from your side, from a sales and marketing standpoint, mm -hmm. if there is. There's certain things that you can track. There's certain things that you can monitor. There's certain things that you can trace, right? If the issue with the take up or let's say the acquisition, it, you, you, okay, the, there could be a potential issue based on the acquisition, which may not stem from what you do and your practices, but actually the information and the links that we've provided. Therefore, the service that you offer, let's say, has a, potential success rate of 0 0.01 it suddenly drops to 0 0.002 i.e a fifth of what it normally is and the reason for that you can't quantify it but the potential of that is because we've added a link which is not designed or developed by you effectively right right i think that makes a lot of sense um yeah i, I think that i follow you and I, I think that that's probably the case um you know if we allow or invite external links and platforms and you know various integrations that can are, change the take up yeah sure. i mean they're, they're out of our control um it could uh, you know affect just what we do which is typically um you know just an email from person to person written by an, you know a creative entertainment writer that is the message is designed to just get a warm response and, and to get a time set up to talk um you know and for them to understand what it is you want to talk about of course right we don't just want to yeah if, if it was if it was a case of a call to action or let's say a, re a registration link yeah. it's it's slightly different because leon of course isn't going to speak to twenty thousand individual people um, right. it's impossible well i would say it's impossible so you know it may be that leon moves to some sort of mass conference or mm -hmm. you know meetings or for example pre-recorded conversation or pre-recorded video for example, sure. to explain his products, which is again, still slightly different to mine. Would you still be interested in creating something where it was, you know, professionally worded, scripted correctly, sent out at the right time, the right message, the right imagery, so on and so forth, which is your expertise, mm -hmm. but then having some registration link or let's say I am interested, I'd like to find out more. So it may not necessarily be a meeting, or a conversation, but it would be at least an expression of interest. So that at that point, Leon could yeah. send out the manifesto, which is more bespoke or send out, for me, it would be sending out or, or even having them directly linked to the bank itself. I mean, is that something that could be of interest to your company? I think so. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, if, if you were to do, um, you know, if the end goal is like a webinar, for example, um, to drive registration and attendance, as opposed to a meeting, which I think for your purposes, um, well, both you and, and Dr. Leon would probably be more effective. Um, yeah, I think that's something that we could we could handle. Well, for me anyway, because I have a diverse 
thing is we have both because I want specifically target. So I want to talk to like exactly. that, all the bishops of US, for example. So I want to talk to a high ranking level. So I, I want to cater to the, the, the 380 million Americans individually by mass building it. So they watch my preaching or whatever. But I also want to <laughs> talk to the, you know, the, the 1,000 uh, principals or, or governors and, the, you know, the 100 yeah. senators or the 1,000 uh, educational board uh, governors or the things. So, so I want to cater for both, uh, mm-hmm. actually. And, and that's actually one of my two <clears throat> questions that I want to ask just to, first of all, so say we sign a contract and we pay the 3,000 a, a month, which is sound like it's all inclusive, blah, blah, blah. You design the website, you start the mailing. Typically, how long does it take you from us signing a contract, starting to you getting the, or the website up and running to you then starting uh, emailing it and then we will start seeing it, you know, uh, response hopefully. Well, you know, is it a month, is it two months, is it three months or is it six months? How long? Typically? Yeah, good, good question. So it's within a month. Um, the, we call it kind of the, the um, ramp up period, I'd say yeah. is typically three to four weeks. So if, you know, if we do move, move forward and sign an agreement, um, we would schedule the onboarding call, that first step in the process for about a week, within about a week of getting that signed agreement. Um, it takes us about a week after the onboarding call to get the new domain up and running uh, at a healthy level to where we're comfortable to send out emails. So yeah. then about two weeks after the onboarding call, the first sends will go out and we do slowly ramp up over the first few days because you don't want to get flagged Slug the account yeah exactly Plus, you know yeah. blasting out a ton of content or a ton of messages um so most of the time people see their first you know meetings or whatever you want to call it hit the calendar um three to four weeks in i would say and okay. then from that point on kind of steadily increase throughout okay so that's one question my second question is as i mentioned i have a diverse interest, like I said, both spectrum. I want to uh, get to all 380 million Americans, but I also want to get to the, the, the 100 senators uh, and the, the thousand school governors. So can I change the targeting month to month or in which I say to you, hey, this week, I, I, want, to, I want all Americans to, to get out my message that, you know, uh, hallelujah, you know, this is the, the preaching we want to do. And then the following months, oh, no, no, can, uh, uh, can you now target me the, the 100 senators? Because I need to speak to senators now because I had mm-hmm. such a, a mass, fantastic uh, interest to in our website. Now target me to go. So can we can we flip which targeted uh, audience we want you to send emails to? Well, I think I would start by saying we wouldn't be the right partner for the 300 million, for the outreach to the masses. Like it just wouldn't make sense to, to hire us to do that. We would be a good partner for the 100 center senators or 1000 principals or, or what have you. Um, that being said, the message, we can do a couple of different messages within a single campaign. If you wanna get into say five different messages or more, then we would look at doing, you know, just setting up multiple campaigns. So um, the cost would be more to do that. But just within a single campaign, we can do, we could use, you know, two or three messages, for example. Can I ask a question at at this point? Would you see this, um, let's just say the 300 million and the 100, uh, using Leon's example. Would you see this as two separate campaigns, aka two sets of fees, i.e. 3,000 for this, 3,000 for that? Would it all be falling in the 3,000? That was my first question. And number two, um, I know you said that you don't appear or you don't believe that you would be the right partner. Um, if it is a case of registration, there's only two reasons that I can see that you wouldn't be the right partner. One is because it costs money to send those emails. Um, and number two is that you don't have the manpower to reply to the emails with the quality and the standard that you may normally do that with, with the bespoke meetings. So if it was a case that we wanted to get registration only on one side and we dealt with the interest, Okay, would I know it would change your model, but it's still possible. So I think the only risk to you is the fact that you're paying for, you know, a provider or a platform to send out millions of emails. I don't know what the cost is, but I'm sure there is a cost. Yeah, and, and that's just not 
um, so we're not typically sending out the same message to multiple prospects. And, you know, we're, I'm going to keep calling them prospects because usually we're, this is for business development. Um, so if we were to do, you know, if we were to write the emails, have our on-staff writers produce them as we do now, uh, I don't think we could, we would have the capacity to do it. And I, if we Correct. could, but if, we, if we had, if we had a staged, let's say, you know, we said we want to target, you know, five different um, jurisdictions. There's different content for each of those jurisdictions. It's pre-written. And then there's a secondary response following the registration. Or, you know, would you like to find out more? Here's the manifesto. Here's the video. Great. So it's a second email. Mm-hmm. Or, you know, whatever it is, there's a, there's a pre-worded, pre-populated response that goes out. I'm guessing that's doable. It, 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 it's going to skew your figures for sure when it comes to what kind of um, meetings are booked in and so on. But I think one campaign that Leong is doing is exactly what you do. And the other campaign is more a case of getting that message out to the masses, masses, but it's cleverly worded, perfectly scripted, timed correctly. See the timing and the scripting, there's still a value in that. Yeah, you know, and the service, there's still a value in that. So you know, as long as you don't say, well, actually guys, you know what? It's gonna cost you know, five cents for every email we want to send out 20 million, you know, that's a million dollars, right? For, for, for email blast, you know? Um, so we need to understand, you know, what the prohibiting factor is. If it's because you can't guarantee the quality of the response, that's a different issue to cost of the emails. Do, do you understand? Because we will get eyes on the site. We will get viewers. We will get people requesting information. We will get, um, you know, users signing up. It's, it's, we don't we can't and you can't obviously tell us what that figure is going to be mm-hmm. but it's it's about the awareness and then on the other side on let's say campaign two you still have the more targeted the more bespoke aka it's almost like a, i'm going to say it like a, a pa booking me at meeting um and having you know those conversations with those high net clients or those influential clients to to word things right to get that interest to get that meeting booked in it for me it's two campaigns basically yeah yeah, I mean, it's an interesting concept. It's one, honestly, that I haven't um, really considered and, and I haven't personally worked on one like this, but uh, I would just kind of escalate it internally here and say, hey, here's kind of the idea. Um, I'm sure it's come up before where someone has said, look, we're interested in getting registration or basically we're just interested in eyeballs as opposed to a one-on-one interaction for a sales engagement. At least for, for part of the campaign, that, that yeah. I think is applicable right. for both Leon and, and for myself, definitely. Yeah. And then also just keeping in mind, so everyone is clear that we are only targeting people in the United States. So okay. if that, yeah. okay, just to- So, so, we, so we need to then understand the sort of demographics, which is a, maybe a follow-up email from this conversation. So mm-hmm. maybe, you know, if Leon doesn't have your terms of business to have, you know, the standard terms of business, Mm-hmm. Um, what you offer in those terms, you know, rough time parameters, which is already what you've explained, but perhaps in the email of stage by stage, week by week, what we would expect. And then beyond that, obviously you have the onboarding, learning about us, the product and so on and so forth. That That is fine. I think uh, it's more just looking at the demographics, looking at the sectors so that Leon can focus in and say, okay, well, these people are irrelevant. These people we need to get in touch with, you know, and from your 300 million, you then have maybe 10 million or 10,000, whatever the, whatever the figure is. I, mean, I think we have to have the, the opportunity to profile with you. Yeah. Yeah. Um, no, absolutely. I mean, that we rely on our clients. We would rely on you in this situation to provide us with that information, uh, you know, to get to the right, the right people. Um, but we'll also be able to tell if the, you know, the pool of people who you want to reach, again, using campaign number two, a smaller pool of, let's say, 100 individuals, we will be able to tell in advance if the, you know, if that doesn't exist, right? If we're not able to have access to the numbers that we want to. Exactly. So I think from from my standpoint, and forgive me, Leon, for, for jumping in, is if we have an opportunity to create the perfect profile or speak to you via email about the perfect profiles of those you know, clients that we're looking to see or speak to um, before we even engage, because, you know, of course we can learn your process. We can learn your onboarding and your time scales, which is great. 
and what you offer, which does sound good. Um, and at the same time go, okay, well, before we do so, you know, these are the kind of people we look to target. Are they even on the database? Because if, if, if you can't, they may be on the boat database, but it might be hard for you to profile them and find them within that database using the parameters you have. So you obviously have a filtration system that profiles age, you know, net worth, let's say location, and so many other profiles, which you would use to narrow down the funnel to close in on those specific uh, people, which mm -hmm. I think that's, if you have an introductory message, which I'm sure you will have a standard terms of business effectively, and then, you know, Leon can liaise with you to say, well, these are my ideal 10,000 clients and these are my top 100 people that I need to speak to. Mm -hmm. I think at that point, everyone, including myself, uh, we can go, cool, let's sign up, let's get this done mm -hmm. and move forward with, with the targeted messages because there's one that's targeted and there's one that is kind of pre-written for the masses, if that makes sense. So there's two, two campaigns, two messages and what happens on this side is separate, what happens on this side is separate, effectively. Yeah. Yeah. It, I think it's just like to start with, it would just be about identifying who those individuals are. You know, I mean, I, I have clients who are targeting, um, you know, employees of federal government agencies, which um, their information is out there, right? It's public because they're a government employee. However, may be a little bit trickier to effectively communicate with and get in the door with. Um, so if, you know, if Zoom info has it, we have access to it. That's, basically how to look at it. Um, so elected officials, certainly uh, principals of schools, you know, education uh, leaders, things of that nature, we can certainly have access to, you know, in, in the masses. Um, it would just be more of a, how do we want to really qualify them, kind of boil it down to who would be the most valuable um, influencers yeah. for, for you? I think, I think Leon, um, forgive me, it, the best thing for Leon to do would be to create a sort of ideal demographic of the kind of clients he would want to mass message mm -hmm. and then send that profile to you. And then conversely, if there's, let's just say specifically, there's a hundred people that Leon definitely wants to speak to a, a thousand. If he can download that list, not from yourselves, but if he was to compile a list of the top 10 archbishops, for example, um, that he wants to speak to, then, you know, he can actually give you those names and say, do you have these people on the database or look-alike data, people who are very similar in similar positions, perhaps you can, mm -hmm. you know, better. Yeah, that's a good idea. Okay. Yeah, no, no, I think uh, Barnaby actually asked all the questions that I was going to ask, so it was just perfect. So you pretty much, uh... so is there any other questions that anyone else wants to uh, put to Andrew? Because I think you've covered pretty much all that uh, I wanted to ask in this forum. So, so the, the, the gift I have from this, so obviously I know about all these data emails and so I get a lot of stuff, is my feel is the, the two aspects, like I said, here in America anyway, I want to target 380 million American. I want to target 7.8 billion people on this planet. So for that mass million, I will probably go directly to database providers. So I know who they are anyway. So it's not that I don't know who they are, I do know. It's just that obviously, just simply sending an email, like I said to you, I get junk email most of the time, I just hit delete, 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 delete. So obviously I want a, a more professional person, obviously I know about the thing, to, to target in a way that will, you know, at least get them to sort of read it. But it looks like the mass mailing is, I will probably, uh, for the mass mailing, I will likely go directly to the database provider and, you know, and use my own, uh, team to draft up because uh, we have very talented people in our team to draft up the, the message that will blast up to 380 million American and 7.8 billion uh, people around the world. So most likely we will not use your server for that because you're not really uh, catered for that. Uh, so that will pretty much take that. But there are specific targets, for example, like example, as you mentioned, I know who the 100 senators are. It's on their website, it's on all their websites. So it's not, again, it's not like you can't get the things, like, you know, just send an email saying, hey, by the way, I'm some strange, some weirdo stranger that wants to speak to you. You know, it's like, oh, okay, delete. You know, it's like, so, all right, you, the weirdo stranger, get, get me the meeting, you know? So you claim you can do it. That's you, right. So that, that's where I believe your area of expertise will come in. Uh, so, so, yeah, so I think the, the two ends of the spectrum, the 
the one end, the mass mailing, uh, I'll probably go direct, not probably, I would go directly to the, the database provider and they pretty much just sell you like, like Barnaby said, you know, the 0 0.005 per email, whatever it is, this that they, they charge or whatever it is, and, you know, for us to create the content and blast it out, et cetera. But we'll use you for the specific, like example, Hollywood, I want to target specific Hollywood people, for example. I want to target specific religious people. I want to target specific politicians. Therefore, do I believe you have those in your database? Absolutely. I mean, so it's not like you, know, you don't have. So my issue is not, you know, I could get those things. The issue is how you target it. So obviously, you guys have learned the experience. You have the, uh, the, the, the nuance of writing the message and all that. So, you know, and I, with our team, our global team, we have a lot of other things on our plate. So, you know, so you can, out of your 100, you can get 30 senators to have a meeting with us. They're fantastic. And as far as I'm concerned, that's fantastic. That will be uh, ideal for us. So that's where, obviously, your, your areas of expertise will be most uh, applicable for what we want. You know, to, so there's no entity that I'm hoping to close down in the next week or two. That will be an ideal platform. That's why I mentioned about Hollywood. We have the Hollywood thing, but that's specifically related to Hollywood stuff. So, so if there's no other questions from yeah. Andrew, you want to I had, an, I had a question. Yes. Uh, when it comes to mass email, uh, there's any way you can guarantee that those emails don't end up on the spam bots? Yeah, so we um, are strategic in order to make sure that that doesn't happen. Um, but also, I'll, I'll mention that you would have a regular meeting with your service team to look at analytics around the campaign. So um, that would be every other week, you would just have a phone call with them to look at, um, you know, open rate, reply rate, metrics of that sort to give you a good idea um, of the engagement happening with the email. So you know that they're not just hitting a you know, like a hitting a dead end, for example. Um, but one of the reasons, and there are multiple ways that we do this. One of the reasons we normally don't, don't include HTML or um, images within emails or links to video within emails are because those things can contribute to being pushed to a spam folder or a promotions folder. Um, so what, yeah, our service is 100% dependent clearly on making sure that the intended recipient sees the the message okay and do you use any other platform uh, apart from emails or currently we, we currently we don't yeah 100 percent email okay. um okay. yeah that may that could change at some point down the road but uh right now it's it's 100 percent email driven okay thank you. Yeah, thank you so one last question well for me anyway because i know that so the flat fee three thousand that pretty much includes everything because you, you mentioned something about there may be additional charges. I think that was relating to my question. Well, what if I flip flop my campaign from you know uh, from the 300 billion that I'm trying to target to the 100 I'm trying to target? So is, is the 300 flat fee for everything imaginable, or are there quote small print extra charges that you uh, charge relating to whatever you know? No, it is a flat monthly fee. And, you know, we structure it that way intentionally just to make it very clear. Um, there's no fee for the onboarding call or, you know, for any of the uh, calls with your service team or, um, you know, reports that you want to see given the data and analytics of the campaign. Everything is including our, our entire service is included for that flat monthly fee of $3,000. Okay. All right. Well, I think... Uh... So any other question? If not, I just want to tell you, because I wrote in my email, I am actually going to post this uh, publicly because I said to you, there's other members that I want to review this stuff. Because I said, I, we're, we run a global organization. Of course, based on your conversation, we know that this specific one, your service right now is only target for the US. But I still want uh, the members, uh, our members to, to be aware of what your service provides. So I'm happy if they contact you, because I said each of our members, some of our members run their own organizations, their own businesses as well. So part of our membership is to give them information. So so I have no problem with the members. So, oh, by the way, I saw your video, blah, blah, blah. I wanted to hire your service. So that's fine by me. I, you know, uh, that's, that's part of our, our global outreach anyway, to help publicize you, know, you anyway. So you, know, so you get free service from us. 
Yeah, man. You know, damn. Like, I should, hey, we should be charging you for our database, our Zoom email, our Zoom profiling, you know? So, you know, we should charge a flat rate, by the way, Andrew. So, so don't there you worry. go. Yeah. Flat rate of everything. So, no, no. Uh, I appreciate your time, Andrew. Is uh, anyone out there uh, got any other question uh, that you they want to obviously uh, ask Andrew? If not, I'm going to uh, end this. It'd be most uh, informative. I appreciate your time, Andrew. I'll post uh, the link up. Obviously, I'll, um, I'll send it to you as well, Andrew. And I'll send that link to all our other uh, business associates. So they, they may contact you directly. So obviously, I'll, I'll give them your information. I know that you want business. So and I'm just giving you free publicity to our members. So I'll post the link. I'll, I'll include your information. So I'll mention uh, to our member, watch it, all the information here, but they need to contact you and contact you directly. Otherwise, I'll digest it with the, the team that we're working with, our specific pro campaign. And I said to you, we will decide, you know, I believe the mass mailing will go down one of the route. I don't think you'll be here for that. So, but the, the more focused the target one, uh, we, we will probably, um, you know, use that the service uh, that you're offering, you know, uh, specifically, but we have to tailor it specifically to what we can, we, we have a lot of members, each one different campaign. We have two major campaigns. The one is the one God, one religion, and the one is uh, Andrea's one humanity, one will. So those are the two specific ones that I am particularly really focused on, uh, on that. But both of that, the one God, one humanity is more than mass mailing. The one humanity, one world, like Andrew is doing, it's more specific. And we do want to, you know, we want to get the, the, the manifesto to the masses, et cetera. We also want to target key uh, decision makers, especially in the educational platform, that kind of thing. So that could be an ideal platform for you. So thank you very much. And no question, everyone. I uh, appreciate everyone calling in. Again, I appreciate obviously Andrew for taking your time and for Barnaby for asking uh, in depth question, which uh, answered a lot of questions that I wanted as well. So uh, God bless you all, and Andrew, uh, we'll stay yeah. in contact, we'll stay in the loop, and we'll see, we'll see what happens, okay? Great, sounds okay, good. Thanks, Thank everyone. You. Thanks, right. guys. Take Take care. Care.